call them as the formula of bliss. There are four of them. What are they? <clears throat> Tattvam Asi. This is the first Mahavakya. Second Mahavakya. I am Atma Brahma. This is Brahman. Third Mahavakya. Pragnanam Brahma. Conscious illumining factor is Brahman. And finally, the last one. Aham Brahmasmi. I am Brahman. So, somebody very beautifully put this in a logical sequence. <clears throat> when the student comes to the master, the master's instructional upadesha vakya is tattvam asi. That which you are searching is your very nature. Tattvam asi. Go investigate. Contemplate on that. When can the contemplation really be fruitful? When we have disidentified with the body, mind and intellect and use that subtle, sharp, steady intellect in a contemplative process. So, you sit on the seat of contemplation and contemplate on it. Tat Tvam Asi. You are the very nature of that which you are searching. So, what is the nature of that? Tat. What is the nature of Tvam now? And how can it be one, Asi, with that which I am searching? So, the master comes by, knocks on the door of the sadhak. <coughs> And the sadhak responds, Aham Brahmasmi, I am that Brahman. Aham Brahmasmi. So the teacher looks at him and he says, True, but yet not there. Continue your sadhana. And closes the door and leaves. Why is it that he has not yet completely reached? Because there is still seemingly a difference of duality. There is I am and there is Brahman. Even now when I say I am Swami Sarveshananda, Sarveshananda is the name given to this body. I, the one who is illumining this body is definitely other than the name. So, similarly is the next stage experienced here, Aham Brahmasmi. There is that I who is Brahman. Who is that I then? So, the master said continue with your research and contemplation. So, after few years of sadhana. Again, the master knocks and the student says, Pragnanam Brahma. That because of which everything is being aware of, that consciousness, this consciousness because of which I am aware of everything, this consciousness is Brahman. There is no more the qualifier of I am something. That is lost, that is gone. <clears throat> so, the first one was Tattva Masi. Second one was Aham Brahmasmi. Third one was Ayam Atma Brahma. This Atman is Brahma. When you say this Atman is Brahma, there is still there is that duality that can be seen. 
and finally the merge is when you understand that these this very consciousness is brahman we get caught up with these clichés being in the present moment is realization try because even when somebody asks you time you look at the time and tell them do you are trying to be very precise do but when you look at it technically by the time you have answered what is the time that which you have answered is it the present time or is it the past tense the moment you observe that this is the present moment and let me be in this present moment the present moment has already gone by that which you are recognizing is only the past so being in the present moment is always questionable i am atma brahma or pragnanam brahma what does it say you are not trying to be in the present moment but you are the very presence you are the very illumining factor because of whose presence everything moves that substratum which does not move is you and believe me when that point is reached your past present future that concept is gone for a toss we we say that you know some of these mahatmas they can predict future they could clearly tell me my past from their standpoint there is just one point one speck and that speck is called time which we analyze it in terms of past present and future for them it is just a presence there is no past there is no present there is no future a simple example and you will understand it say you are standing on the 10th floor of a building or 10th or 10th floor of a building you and i are connected with a walkie talkie <clears throat> and i am right in front of the building at the entrance down below you see a red car entering the street a black car parked right in front of the building and a yellow car which is already gone by which is taking a turn from the 10th floor you can see all of that in one moment but for the one who is downstairs for him or her what is in the present moment the black car is in the present moment the red car which has just taken turn into that street is in the future yet to come the yellow car which has already gone by with the 10th floor yellow can see it for you it has already gone by and it is in past tense for the one who is up there the yellow the black and the red the past the present and the future all of them are in the same moment so the past present and future is it not a point of reference and that point of reference is just a speck with three dimensions to it called past present future that is called a transcending time such individual has transcended time now here what is the abhyasa that is being said when we on the seat of contemplation constantly inculcate tadakar vritti constant vritti that i am nothing less than brahman presently i considering myself as a limited ego what is it it is a conviction 
what can shake that conviction and remove that conviction? Another conviction. You remove the thorn with another thorn. And then what do you do with both the thorns? Throw them away. Right? Similarly, the conviction that I have is that I am limited and I am this ego has to be replaced with the conviction that I am Brahman. The moment that conviction is replaced, Tadakara Vritti, the final disidentification with the intellect happens at that conviction's 100 percent exposure. And then what happens? The true self is revealed in that moment of glorious contemplation. Basking in that glory of the self is called meditation. It is not a very easy word. Swami, I meditate, good for you. It is not that kind of a flippant word to be, it, it has lost its uh, depth. And any Tom, Dick and Harry can mention it and say that I am doing what and whatever I am doing is called meditation. It's good. Good for you. American vocabulary is very helpful there. Good for you. Until then, we need to have that intense contemplation. Tada eka akara vritti. Constant. See, the same thought was learnt even in Upadesha Sara. In Upadesha Sara, the same thought was given as Ajyadharaya Surota Sasamam. Sarala chintanam viralatav param ajyadharavat, like the constant flow of ghee. See, when you, have, you know, take this uh, super expensive cameras and rainy season when it is raining, and from your ceiling as the rain water is falling, you take a close up zoom in and take a photograph. Though, when you look at it with your naked eye, it looks like a constant stream of water. When you take a close-up photograph of it and observe, there is actually a fast rate of drop by drop of water falling. There is no continuity there. But Ajya, Ajya is ghee, melted ghee when you pour. There is a continuous stream. similar continuous stream of one thought that I am Brahman. That conviction has to be created. Once that conviction is ascertained and firmly believed in, it is not like, yeah, I believe in Brahman, I am Brahman. Like if somebody wakes you up, See, the identification of the body is so strong that if somebody were to wake you up when you are snoring, not because you are snoring, but to test and ask you a question, are you male or are you female? Would you have any doubt? Uh, Come after two minutes. Do you have any doubt about it? The conviction is so strong that even in deep sleep when somebody shakes you up and asks you, are you male or female, what is your gender? Answer is straight. And they may scream at you later. Don't you have any other good thing to do? Waking me up in the middle of the night. But you would never get confused of being what gender you are. That kind of conviction has to be ascertained with that one thought that I am Brahman. The final 
intellectual attachment will be gone when that disidentification happens then you suddenly start floating now these are just words okay that experience cannot be proved in words so trying to use words you will be gliding in what is called a effortless state of being you are you know you are you know that you are in the blissful state and that is not a feeling that is not a concept and that cannot be put in words saying that that is an experience because the experience has to have three factors the experiencer the experience the world and the connection of experience here the experienced the experiencer and the experience is one and the same the self for the self in the self so what do we need to do what is a sadhana in nutshell very simple step do it appears very simple when you start expanding it it's, it's pretty big perform karma yoga diligently what does performing karma yoga diligently mean perform your actions do not anticipate happiness as a result then why are you performing that karma so that you can wash the existing patterns of vasanas away how do you do it how do you ensure it by dedicating it to the highest altar and by doing these actions selflessly perform karma yoga understand the karma siddhanta which will build that conviction to perform this kind of karma yoga flawlessly that will give you the capacity to disidentify at the physical realm perform the upasana or bhakti yoga what will it do it does two things and those of them who keep saying i am i am a, a very logical person i am a reason you know oriented person i believe uh, in the philosophy and not in the religion not in the ritual of puja and other things they don't know what they are talking what is the purpose of this puja or upasana it has a dual effect and what is the dual effect upasana is performed so that the disidentification of the the aspect of me being this body and the mind both of them that disidentification happens only through upasana if we think that i am still this body upasana bala is required you cannot avoid it the next gnana yoga is performed so that the intellect is enriched all its queries questions and doubts are clarified and then that pure subtle intellect is used in maintaining this one thought see this is in gnana marga so we talk about the mahavakyas as one thought in the bhakti yoga they carry the one thought of the lord there is no more i thought there is no more you thought there is only one thought of the lord and then the disidentification occurs at that intellectual level 
once disidentified, we have not yet achieved. It is not called, the, the moment you disidentify, it is not called realization. There are intermediary steps. What are they? The moment you disidentify from all these three, what happens is called Dukkha Nivrti. All the causes, seeming causes for Dukkha are negated. Sukha Prapti is not yet happened. For that, I have to abide during meditation in that self as the self. But initially, in the initial uh, period of that meditation, I carry the thought <clears throat> or I carry myself being the self and it is limited to that time and space. As long as I am meditating, I am the self. But the moment I step out of that meditation, the, the seeming pressures of the world and the other things that I am interacting with seem to draw me to the identification of body, mind and intellect and the interactions effectively. Can this world be avoided? Cannot be avoided. So, what is the next solution? Get that firm abidance in the self during meditation so that you transcend time and space. That even when you step out of meditation, you are walking, talking, nothing but as the conscious principle. Your body may have a name, but you are no more identified with the body, mind and intellect and you are firmly without slipping from that highest state, that is called Sanchara Samadhi. That you are walking, interacting without losing the identification of being the self. Do not pick on those words of identification of the self. It is by the self, for the self. Words have its limitations, hence therefore using those limited words. <clears throat> that is the effect of these Mahavakyas. So, this continued as like summing up this thought in the next shloka. It says, Avidyakam Shariradi. Drishyam buddha vatsharam Yetad vilakshanam vidyat Yetad vilakshanam vidyat Aham brahmheti nirmalam Avidyakam Shariradi Drishyam Buddha Vatksharam <clears throat> Up until the Avidyakam, Avidyakam, the causal body, meaning from the uh, grossest aspect to the subtlest aspect. And what is the subtlest aspect? The subtlest aspect is the causal effect, the ignorance, that is the cause. All of them, what are, what are, what is its nature? It says, Drishyam Buddha Vatksharam, all of them can be perceived and they can be perceived as perishable objects, as perishable as Buddha, Buddha the bubbles. <clears throat> Many of these three, four year olders, they have a fascination to those soap bubbles. So, they get this a little a tiny box and then there is that little loop 
and they dip it in that and then once they blow those bubbles there are various kinds of aspects that they play with it some of the younger ones want to break every bubble created and the moment the last bubble is they feel so happy but as they grow they want to have one bubble unreachable to anybody untouched unbroken sometimes it's very difficult to handle that situation for god's sake it breaks oh i need that bubble only we'll create one more no see the bubble how long will it last the kid may not understand this but as a experience how long will it last very temporary similarly the entire life or lives worth experience of identification is like that bubble it is called theory of relativity it may appear long but is it really long <clears throat> as an 31st finishes of december as we welcome january 1st and we look back at that entire year don't we feel that the year seems to have passed too fast it is as if we just started it with january and it's already december don't you feel all of us feel that though morning to evening the day seems to be stretching too long unbearably long years they just seem to be flying away ask anybody do you know when an elderly person most of them do not want to be called as old how are old you are when that transition happens when suddenly uh, you are called as uncle and auntie for the first time the cow that you have the the, the unsettled feeling that you have for a couple of days me uncle auntie no way and we go out and try uh, change people's way of uh, address okay don't call me uncle and aunty okay call me didi whatever if it pleases you fine and finally you know that you have reached to a certain point wherein there is no point of return you cannot camouflage any more you are old that is when you say i may be old but i am young at heart <laughs> we are not talking about heart good for you you have a young heart may it continue good for you <laughs> why because ask any elderly person 60 years 70 years 80 years 90 years 100 years doesn't matter why old person whatever age that you are of at this moment look back at your own age does it doesn't it seem like having gone just like that that many years add another 30 40 50 years to it the experience is still the same it seems insignificantly small that is called theory of relativity in a day seems to be so long but the 
एंटायर लाइफ वर्थ लिमिटेशन इज ऑल डन एज वन बुदबुद लेट एस टेक अ सेकेंड एग्जाम्पल हैव यू एवर ड्रीम्ड यूर सेल्फ एज अ यंग किड ग्रोइंग थ्रू वेरियस एक्सपीरियंसेस एंड देन रीच टू अ एज रियली ओल्ड इन योर ड्रीम लाइफ स्पैन ऑफ सिक्सटी सेवेंटी ईयर्स लिव्ड इन एंटायर ड्रीम एंड यू वेक अप यू फाइंड दैट यू जस्ट लेफ्ट फॉर टेन मिनिट्स इज इट अ पॉसिबिलिटी सो सिक्सटी सेवेंटी ईयर्स लिव्ड इन द ड्रीम वेन यू लुक एट वेन यू वेक अप it is just 10 15 minutes so 60 70 years worth experience done similarly entire lives not just this life lives worth experiences of limitations are budbudavat are like the bubbles which are temporary how much time that that bubble goes up and then you know done similarly our experiences as <clears throat> one but you know when we go through the overwhelming situations it is so terrible it doesn't feel like like this it feels like that's what is the theory i told you right Sukha and dukha, the pendulum swing. This side is sukha. This side is dukha. How does the pendulum swing? It has to be equal on both sides. But sukha, dukha. Every moment, and then it comes back also with the same pace. And then sukha. they are all relative ye tad vilakshanam vidyat of all these things realize that i the self is something which is different vilakshanam something which is of the most effulgent nature something which is unlimited essentially by nature and that is nirmalam nirmalam there is no blemish of any kind what is a blemish anything that limits its existence becomes its blemish and paramatma or that atma does not have any sort of blemish aham brahmeti nirmalam <clears throat> so how is the experience of somebody who is reveling as the self a little sample is given here few samplers are given the 32nd shloka repeat after me dehan yatvanname janma jara karshya layadayah शब्दाषय संग निरीद्रयतया न निरीद्रियतया न देह अन्यत्वात् न मे जन्म 
I not being the body do not go through the experience of Janma. What goes through Janma is just the physical aspect. There are other modifications of this body. Asti, Jayate, Vardhate, Viparinamate, Apakshiyate, Vinashyati iti. There are six modifications. Asti first has to be conceived. Jayate is born. Bundle of joy is born. You don't know when that bundle of joy changed to be what it is today. <laughs> I am not defining what it is. Why? They are no more that packet of joy. What are they now? From that size, you, me, everybody, from that little size, every time I see a newborn baby within a week or so, you pick them, they are just this much. And as you see, they grow. Asti Jayate, Vardhate. And that is why in the market you have clothes for one month old, clothes for two month old, clothes for three month old. Sometimes their growth rate is so fast that though they are just second month, they are already wearing six month coat. Buckle up, imagine what will happen after six years or growing. Vardhate. Then comes an age wherein the chemicals, hormones start kicking in. That is when you have complete change. The girl becomes a woman, the boy becomes a man. <clears throat> Until then they, they keep uh, messing around. Because the, the son wears dad's shoes, dad's pants and you know starts to shave, tries to grow some beard. It will come, but once it starts coming, it will be a pain. Don't hurry. They don't know, they want it. And the girl also wants to apply lipstick, wear all those, uh, what do you call those uh, sand? No. Heels. Huh. What kind of heels those? Hey, doctor, why? Ah, now you are talking. So they try that and then wear the sarees and they want to look elderly. A strange coincidence, a strange irony that a young child does not want to be known as young. Call a look at a little fellow and say, hey little fella, come here. I am not little. I am three and a half years old. And there are some who will give you the exact month and change of days. I am that old. No, tell that you are that I am that old. When you are young, you want to be called old. When you are old, you want to be called young. Something wrong up here. Asti Jayate Vardhate Viparinamate. Then comes the age wherein one after the other things start falling apart. It starts with there is an age that we all come across that wherein we will have to have bifocal. Or if you have never had glasses till then, then you will have, you can uh, you know, see everything with glasses, but in order to read, you have to take the glasses off and read or the other way around. You can, you are pretty good with the world, in order to read, you have to take, you know, where did I keep those glasses, uh, those power glasses plus 2, plus 2.5. 
and write there and then the first hint probably during the same time is the next hint that our hair is talking loudly to us stop all the black activities of limitations grow towards the white greatness we don't like that hint what do we do color them up and next one after the other sometimes the teeth they are lost the front are gone then you know you are so vexed with it finally there are 8 or 10 left you pull all of them out so that you can get good set of dentures <clears throat> this was one of my fifth or sixth lectures in my life and this was in bombay so i was speaking and um, there was this lady who was sitting in the front very front row and i used the best of my jokes to start the entire gathering who was sitting was jumping with laughter this lady was like stubborn would not yield she wouldn't even smile so i tried my second best in like you know another 5 minutes everybody was like jumping again this lady would not budge so in next one and a half hours she became my personal challenge she was not smiling she was not laughing i made sure that i'd give my best of the efforts she won she did not but she did not laugh so as soon as the pravachan was done i jumped from the stage ran i said what is wrong with you <laughs> i had to ask i tried my best of the things so you know she puts her pallu and then she says you made my day miserable for me i said i gave you the best of the jokes and you say i made your life miserable she says it is just today that i have changed my denture for the first time i am wearing a denture and the doctor has said do not exert much because they have to take that shape and you will not be comfortable and you made my life miserable because you went on and on and on and i was like i was peeling exploding from inside but i couldn't laugh so i said because you were not laughing i took it as a personal challenge to make you laugh the dentures so each one of the organs of perception action starts changing its modification losing its vitality and then comes one fine day when nothing more to change we quit this apartment to find another one we wind everything from this and move to the next one so these are to the body i am the one who is conscious of all these movements but the one who is not changing that conscious principle i am <clears throat> shabda adi vishaye hi sangah nirindriyataya na cha this is i have nothing to do with the shabda sparsha roopa rasa gandha because they are with respect to the organs of perception and action i am somebody who is beyond somebody who is not limited by these indriyas nirindrataya na cha <clears throat> and then he continues to give the experience of the self how beautiful it is that we will see next time we meet ओम पूर्ण 
ಪೂರ್ಣಮದಃ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಾವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತ ಶಾಂತ ಶಾಂತಿ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ